What up, YouTube? Nice, bright, sunny day in the UK. I think it's the first day of fall, actually. 20th or 21st. Anyways, new season, new chapter. And I wanted to talk about something important to me that hopefully will benefit you. So, yeah, addiction is a strong word, right? People think of like a heroin addict, a heroin addict who, you know, sold their mother's you know, find China to, uh, just to, you know, have one fix laying in a ditch. Um, and I think, and people are kind of hesitant about the word addiction being used to describe minor things. But in this case, I think it's a valid choice because addiction doesn't have to be some crazy thing where say an alcoholic, you know, drives drunk and gets themselves killed. Uh, you know, an a addiction can be something that, you know, there's a term called a functional addict, which is someone who has a problem persistent over a long time, but they can still function. And I think a lot of people are functioning internet addicts. So I'm going to start off talking about my own experience and then talk more generally. So for me, this kind of I finally had enough um, about three days ago now. I've been meaning to make this video for a while, but it's a lot going on in my life, so I haven't had time. Um, yeah, I woke up at 2.30 in the morning, and I couldn't fall back asleep. Usually when that happens, I've had like a very emotional dream, and then I'm just kind of in a weird state of mind where I'm like more thoughtful than usual, and I'm thinking about that. But in this case, every once in a while, this happens like once a month maybe, I just woke up. I couldn't go back to sleep. And of course, as soon as you're awake and conscious, you start thinking about things. And I started thinking about this like discussion I was having with this dude online about something really inane. And I, I was thinking about like, oh, he said this, but I'm going to say that. And then I, I just like, I just like took a step back from myself and I'm like, took a breath I'm like this is some really stupid shit like this is not like a good use of my 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 brain I like the Buddhists say like you have a precious human existence if you think about all the creatures I don't know there's what like a million times more insects than human beings maybe more and all the different animals and not to mention that we're born right now we're not slaves we're not peasants we're, we're um <coughs> you know we're not dying of disease at age 17 we didn't die in infancy like probably like 20 or more percent of all people throughout human history i mean it's it's important that whatever we're going through to stop and take account of our blessings and and this this is how i'm using my mind and i just I, I feel blessed that this happened to me. Um, a lot of people talk about self-improvement and they talk about, you know, you just got to do it. You just got to like make up your mind. And I think there's something to that. It's good to like have that attitude where you want to make up your mind and you want to take the right actions. But I want to give encouragement to anybody out there who's having trouble with that whole mind state because sometimes you know what's the right thing to do. I mean, that's pretty much the definition of addiction, right? You know what you want to do, you know what you don't want to do, and you keep doing what you don't want to do. But there is a point, and maybe it's premature for me to say this, because I've only been kind of off my addictions for like three or four days now, but it feels very permanent. It feels very good, and like I just kind of hit a point of disgust, and I think disgust is like an important emotion to have um yeah it's just like you just have to reach a level where like a certain behavior is just unacceptable and you just sometimes it just clicks on a really deep level like this is not serving me this is not who i want to be and i just think about all the times in my life that I've just kind of used this as a distraction mechanism and it's so easy to do so because whatever is going on in your life nowadays even more so with the smartphone 
which I finally got in 2015, just out of convenience. I was really resistant to getting one of these for a long time because I thought, well, at least if I'm home and I'm on my computer, I can get sucked into playing games, like getting in discussions with people, you know, scrolling on Facebook or a news feed or a forum and just reading whatever is fed to me. Um, but at least when I'm out and about, you know, in the city, I lived in New York City at the time, like, I can't do that. I have to be present. I have to be taking in what's actually around me. But I finally got one. Um, so I don't have last video. I had a script. But this time I'm just, I have some notes, paper notes in front of me or to the side of me. Oh, <sighs> So... Yeah, yeah, distraction is like a real thing. Um, there's this this uh, Canadian doctor, Gabor Mate, you might have heard of him. He talks a lot about attentional attentional problems, a ADD, as um, not as like an organic brain problem that you just, some people are just born with, but as a kind of a trauma response, it's like the classic trauma responses that most people know are fight or flight. But if you think about yourself as a little baby, or even as a toddler or a small child, you can't really fight anybody when you're like like this big. And you can't run away from your family as much. I mean, I'm sure most children at some point, their mom or dad or both has pissed them off. And they're just like, I'm leaving. I remember when I was like six or seven years old, I was really angry at my mom. I'm like, yeah, I'm never talking to her again. <laughs> and then, of course, dinner time came around and I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of hungry and I can't really solve that problem myself. And then my mom started talking to me and I just started talking to her back and I felt like a little bad about myself. Like, oh, so much for my convictions. But what you can do as a kid is you can distract yourself. You can, someone could be yelling at you or someone could be telling you what to do or someone could be neglecting you or ignoring you. Um, and you could just go somewhere else in your head. And that just becomes like an escape um, that you can do for the rest of your life. And obviously the internet is not the only escape, but it's a nice, easy, quick escape. And it's pseudo-social, so you can feel like connected with other people. Um, yeah, I'm kind of jumping around my notes here. But yeah, the way I would describe internet interactions is like very low risk and very low reward. Right, like say you're in school, right, and, and you, you, go up to some, you go up to a group of kids and you present yourself. They can reject you, they can laugh at you, they can ostracize you, and, you know, that will last a long time. I remember when I was, I went to boarding school when I was 13, it was an all-boys boarding school. I was not, it was not with consent, I did not want to go, I was not happy to be there, and I fell into a depression pretty quick, and I remember the first day of class, this kid came up to me and he's like, yeah, he's like a shorter kid. And he's like, yeah, what up? What, what's up, big guy? And I was just like, uh, like, hi. I don't even, I don't even think I said anything. I was just like, you could tell that like my energy was off and I was just giving off like kind of weird, uncomfortable vibes. And I feel like right there, that moment, like him and his group of friends were like, okay, like this guy's ostracized right but online you can jump around to different communities you can present yourself however you want you know and you're in control you talk when you want you read when you want you leave when you want there's no like in your face pressure to perform um socially and but there's also no reward you you're not going to make your best friend I'm, I'm not saying you can't make friends online i'm not saying that uh, online interaction can't be beautiful or meaningful or you can't like share yourself. I mean, I'd be a hypocrite to say that, right? Because I'm doing that right now with the YouTube audience. Although I do, I do think YouTube is, is better than forums better. I mean, this is just my opinion, obviously, um, better than forums, better than Facebook, better than just text-based discussion. Cause you kind of get a sense of who I mean. You can see that's another one of my notes on a whole different page, but like most of human communication is nonverbal, right? Like so when you're just texting to each other, there can be a lot that's like lost, lost in translation. And, you know, a lot of times, I mean, I've been on this internet forum since 2002. So it's 2023. 
So 21 years, like the whole human life <laughs> up until age 21, I've spent on this forum. It started off, I was just playing this uh, computer game and I wanted to do some multiplayer games with other people. And then there was like an off topic forum and I joined and I started like chatting with people. And I feel like back then it was just much chiller and more fun. I mean, I think a lot of people would agree with me that the internet just used to be less polarized, just kind of more chill, more fun, more laid back. Um, it's just a totally different forum now, but you, you just have inertia. And I, I quit for years at a time. I stopped going because I'm like, this is a total waste of my time. Why am I having little discussions with people I'll never meet? Um, yeah, they, 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 and a lot of times in, in these online discussions, like, you get the sense that people aren't even talking to you. They're talking to like a character. They decide who you are, what you believe. Even if you didn't explicitly state that you believe that, they put you in a category. It's like, it's kind of like another online game. It's like playing like chess or, or Dominion. Those are like my two online gaming addictions, I would say. And um, except there's no way to determine the winner or loser. Two people can have a discussion and both feel like they pwn to each other so it's it's kind of ridiculous it's just you know and and your life is happening as this is happening you could be like in your little online argument with someone and it's just so embarrassing to even talk about um and like you know your children need you or your girlfriend or like you're neglecting your your like you know your job or or, or or like there's people in your life who are depending on you who you're not thinking about you're thinking about some idiot you're arguing with or like not not all all online discussions or arguments you could think about someone you're like corresponding with or but but really like 99 percent of these people you'll never meet um and even if you did meet you might think you have like a cool bond because you have a very specific niche thing in common with someone um but you don't know how you'd get along in real life. I had a I had a guy I met on this forum and we we were you know, we, we just like felt like we vibed like like we just had a lot in common and we didn't kind of fit into neatly into a, a particular category, another particular category. I don't know. I just he felt like a like a real you know, like he kept it real, like he was just genuine. And, um, and then, you know, we hung out a few times in real life, but then the last time we hung out, like some really weird stuff went down and I'm, I'm, you know, so I'm not going to see him again, but it just made me sad. I'm like, I thought I knew this guy for 14 years, but actually I didn't really know him at all. Um, and not to say that doesn't happen in real life. You know, someone could be married to their wife or husband and then some infidelity happens after 15 years or someone's got this secret or a whole other aspect to their personality comes out. I mean, people change. This this can happen with someone you see every single day. But but online, like, it's just more... You, you just have less... In, you have less information. I mean, you really don't know someone until you've gone through something with them. Until you have experiences. Until you see them under stress. Until you see them... I mean, that's why, you know, if you really want to know someone, have kids with them. Because... Because, you know, when two people, you, you, you can't, there's no fight or flight. You, you can't run away because someone's got to take care of the baby or the toddler or the child. And you have to make decisions. You, you have to come together. You have to put your own ego and desires aside to, like, cooperate. So, whereas, yeah, this this online this online thing is, is yeah, it's, it's low risk, very low risk because you're not going to get ostracized and bullied. I mean, not to say online bullying isn't a thing, but... If you don't like it, you can just leave. You can just find a whole other community. Or if you're in school, you you know it's a lot more work to find a whole other school. Or if you're if you have a group of friends, it's a whole lot more work to make another group of friends. Whereas online, you just pop yourself into a whole different place. I mean, you, you can like shift in space, but the thing is, it's not really space. What's really happening is you're in your room by yourself. Sometimes I would think about that over the years. Like, I would be online for like you know, four or five, six, seven, eight hours at a time, just, and I would just kind of like think of a bird's eye view of myself, like, here I am, like, a man hunched over a computer, not moving, not going anywhere, like, not talking to anyone, not interacting with someone, just staring at a screen, like, that's the physical reality, you're, you're not, 
you're, you're living in your head virtually, you know, and you can do that through a movie. I, that's another one of my notes. I'm hopping all over the place here. But <clears throat> I remember when I first got online, I'm like, well, at least I'm not watching a lot of TV. Like I felt a sense of superiority over someone who just watches TV all day or watches even like six hours of TV because at least I'm interacting. But that's the thing. I'm, you, you're, you're not really interacting in a way. TV and movies are better. I'm using the words better or worse. Again, this is just my opinion. And I'm not saying you should never go online. You should never have an online discussion. This is just like, you know, anyway, I'm not going to say it again. This is just my opinion. Oops, I said it again. Anyways, I remember when I was a little kid and I would watch a movie. You just, you're only watching a movie. You're not on your phone too. You're not like, you know, I mean, and, and there's something to be said for like being a little kid and your ability to like immerse yourself in an experience. You watch a movie and like you're like that was cool and then you go on with your day whereas i remember this was maybe almost 10 years ago now maybe 2013 or 14 i had this roommate in new york and we'd watch a movie together sometimes and after we'd watch the movie he would go online and look up like reviews and what other different people said about the movie which makes sense right because like it makes it a more of a shared experience you're like oh like jorge from mexico said this like John from Indiana said, had this opinion about the movie. And like, that's the thing with the internet. There's like lots of interesting people sharing interesting things. So you can feel like, oh, this is a much richer experience than if I just like me and my homie are sitting on the couch and we watch the movie together and we both like say our opinion of it. And that's cool. But now you can like get a million different people's opinion. But in a way, like you gain something, but you lose more. You lose your own ability to like, really not not to have an opinion it's 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 just it's 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 hard to put into words because it's just so part of life now like most people before they watch something they look it up so they know the aggregate rating of you know a hundred thousand other people you know oh people voted this as eight people voted this as seven people voted this as six whatever and they might even read some reviews of it but there's something nice about just kind of going into experiences fresh. And I feel like that's harder and harder these days. Um, oh, yeah. So let me talk about gaming now. So gaming is really interesting. Like I started playing chess in college. And I was really terrible. Like my buddy used to beat me a rook off. And um, yeah, but I but I just I just got sucked into it. And I don't think... In the internet, I don't think I could have ever gotten into chess in the internet age. Sometimes you can start something in real life and then continue it online. But, you know, I, I live in England. I've been to one chess tournament here. My, my heart is not really in chess anymore. I don't really care about it that much. I feel like, not to say I've reached my peak, because I could go further, but I just, the, the um, cost-benefit, the amount of work I would have to do, and there's so many other things, financial um, regarding my relationship, like regarding my family, there, there's so many other priorities I, I just can't right now. But mm, yeah, and I, and I, I, I've been playing bullet, like bullet chess for anyone who's um. Let me let me show you what bullet chess is, real quick. Like it's funny, right? Chess, you would you would think, oh, chess is kind of the opposite of this scattered mind. It's like you're very focused. You you focus in for a long period of time, and that's what initially drew me to it. But then you start playing, um, okay, yeah, here's here's two two players playing a bullet game. So you're, you're move, oh, nice mate. You're moving as fast as possible. And it feels really good when you, when you get a, when you get a mate like that. Okay, so here's the Carl Kahn defense. So these guys are playing a mile a minute. Um, I'm not going to go on with that too long. So it's just kind of like jerk, 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 reaction, 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 which is kind of similar to how people are online. You know, if you like see two people, two idiots on Facebook arguing with each other, they're, they're just reacting. They're not really reading for nuance. And the same thing with, with playing bullet chess and blitz is like three to five minutes for the whole game. So you're still moving really fast. And of course, if you play a really good game, you're like, yeah, I'm the man. I played like. I had like no time to think and my instincts are just really good. But it's a bit silly. You'll never get good at playing bullet by playing bullet. The only way to play 
be good at playing Blitz, to be good at actual chess. Um, but I don't know, I digress. And then there's another online game I play called Dominion, which I also obviously, well, not obviously, I, pl- I played for the first time in real life at this uh, board game shop back in South Jersey. It doesn't exist, RIP, all the Kingsmen. Um, and and it's escape, but I notice interesting emotional things about myself as I'm, as I'm playing. If I start losing or, or, or I start screwing up, I start wanting to do something else. I start kind of... The, the good thing about chess, especially fast chess, is you're you're only focused on that one thing. Whereas Dominion, it's turn-based, so while the other guy is, is thinking, sometimes I'll go on other websites and I'll browse around. And I do that more when I'm losing, which is the opposite of what I should be doing. I should be focusing more when I'm losing so I could try to turn it around. And then sometimes I'm, if, I'm, if I'm playing Dominion and I'm playing badly, I want to play chess. And then if I play chess badly, I want to go back to Dominion. And it's this whole ego trap. It's this, I just want to win. But why do I want to win at an online game? that no, like, like once this game is over, it's gone. It's like smoke. Nobody cares. Um, I mean, if even if you're playing in a tournament, like really nobody cares. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to do what you want to do because, um, I mean, re- except for outside of like making money because somebody cares when you're working because that's why they're paying you so you have to prioritize that and your family cares that's one of the most stressful things about having children is they're they're looking at you for like inspiration like you're like building who they are and they're looking for like for you like as a role model like how a person's supposed to act and you're like damn I i'm i'm i don't know if i'm acting right i'm like i feel like a goddamn mess so yeah, but then when when you spend so much time online, it, it definitely erodes your social skills, and it, it 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 just takes you away from the moment. And you know, however you're competing, whether you're like arguing with someone or playing a game, or you're like trying to defeat someone, like yeah, there's a really good book called um, No Contest: The Case Against Competition. Alfie Cohen, I think, is the author. Mm. But I don't remember a whole lot from this book. I was read it like 15 years ago or maybe 10, but he was like he was saying that that um losing feels twice as bad as winning feels good. And that's like 100% my experience having played like a lot of these quad chess tournaments where it's four people per bracket and you play everyone one time. If I go 2 and 1, if I win 2 and lose 1, I feel like neutral at best if i go three and oh obviously i'm gonna feel really good but if i go one and two or oh and three i feel like garbage like you just feel like such a dummy you're like yeah which again is silly if you actually think about it this is not like a life or death situation you're not like actually vanquished and like ousted from the tribe you just lost a chess game but but it yeah just all these thousands of hours i've put into these things that I have nothing to show for. And you could always argue to yourself, and obviously anyone who engages in these will argue with themselves, well, it's my recreation, I'm having fun. But is is this what I would do in an ideal world? No. Like, I could say I like chess, and I like Dominion, and I like competitive things. That's cool. So, like, play them in real life. And if I can't play them in real life, don't play. And if, if, if I don't want to get rusty at chess, I could study chess. It's not like I'm going to get better at playing these, like, quick games online i'm not so you know do chess puzzles or read a chess book do something that like yeah forces you to slow down and pay attention and don't feel the need to like Mm, it's really hard to explain there there's there's something egoic about it there's something like no i want this real life interaction right now i want to feel like I'm talking to someone right now. I want to feel like I'm playing right now. Not that I'm studying something that I can maybe will make me better. There's a lack of faith, a lack of faith that you're you, you know you're going to be able to do better, and that, that's really depressing. It's better to just sit, to just sit and and be like, wow, you know, I feel alone. I want to have. I wish I had more people to speak to, you know, about my opinion, and I could hear their opinion. And I guarantee it wouldn't look like it was it, it, it did online. And even if it did, even if you do get into it with your friends and even like shout at each other, like if there's a deep bonds there, it's not going to destroy the friendship. And, and you're going to be treated 
with more respect and you're going to treat the other person with more respect than you would online where you're just like, like, look at this idiot saying this stupid shit. Let me just like, you, you, you know, there's this like, you just want to like squash people, when, especially when they disrespect you and they're mis misunderstanding your argument. Like, it seems like deliberately because, you know, they seem otherwise intelligent, but they're, they're, they're like putting you in a box and you just feel like, yeah, but it kind of feels good, this, like, disgust, this, this like, wanting to, like, you know, show someone. The, the sense of justice that people have, and I think in, in the modern age, this is monetized and, and taken advantage of if you think of all these, like, news articles, what, you know, whatever your political persuasion is, people, like, people will click when it gets them riled up, or people will click for, like, kind of gross reasons, like, cause, like, some celebrity that people don't like is is um doing something stupid and and people like get kind of a sense of glee about that because it makes them feel better about their own lives but like you just want to feel better about your own life through taking actions within your own life um yeah let's see what else i got written down here um yeah, and obviously books are very different than the internet. If you think about like an internet interaction where you're having a discussion with someone, that's just you in real time. Usually when you're not at your best because you're kind of like running away from your real life into the like online world. And, um, and you know, you're just having an interaction, whether it's a conflict interaction or whether it's like a positive interaction versus when you read a book, like, you know, I found this on... Um, my um my, I'll, I'll call her my mother-in-law even though we're not married yet my mother-in-law shelf or stand in her house right now like um i heard of this guy bertrand russell but i never actually read him before and it's really good and this is like this guy sat down he thought about his whole life experience and he put it into a book he's not like escaping and just like you know and, and oh yeah, this one's really good. This kind of I, I just got this right as I was um, from the library. Right as I was, I forgot whether it was the day after or the day before. I, I like woke up at two thirty in the morning and decided to go down a new path. Oh yeah, here we go. There's just some really good stuff here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna read it like a paragraph here. Merely repeating the words, I must attain enlightenment for the sake of all. Oh no no, I'm gonna skip that. Never mind. Scratch that. Um, let me just get to this part. So we need to encourage ourselves by determining from the depths of our hearts. If I live my life in distraction, it will be a great loss. I must progress towards enlightenment and serve other sentient beings. Therefore, I'm going to do this. So you don't have to get into all the like spiritual stuff of this. You don't have to believe in reincarnation. Although reading this book, I can see why it really helps to believe in re reincarnation. Um, but that's for another video. But you, you just have to be like, I don't want to live in distraction. I don't want to like live like this. And when I'm on my deathbed, are the people I talk to online going to be there like by my side? Like you don't know how you're influencing these people when, when you're when you're when you're in real life. You know how you influence people when you see a ch smile on your child's face or when you like say something to your girlfriend and you could tell she feels hurt like you said the wrong thing or you phrased it in a bad way, like you, you can see the impact of your words for, for better or worse and your physical actions. Like if you do a favor for someone, if you do someone's laundry, if you cook someone a meal, if you like mow someone's lawn, if you help someone move, you, you just can't do these actions with other people online. No one online is going to like come hang out with me and my kids and bring their kids so our, the kids can play together and adults can talk and we can all have a bit of a break. Like no one online is going to take these boxes that are in the kitchen and help me move them to my new house. Um, and I'm not going to be able to do that for them. People online can't cook you a meal. They can't like, you know, give you a hug. Like, you know, they can't, um, yeah, they can do a lot of things. They can do things with words. But, like, words are just a very small part of life. Obviously, it's a bit ironic because, right, I'm just speaking all these words right now. But it's what's behind them that's important. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, the brain, when you're interacting with someone, 
you receive all this information. I said this already in different words, like expressions, body language, tone, context. And when you're just interacting via text, you, you, you miss a lot of that. And I, I, I've had this happen in my personal life with like friends and, you know, women I've dated where, where you send an email or a text and they, they message you back and it becomes this huge conflict because like, you know, someone's in a certain mood when they say something and something's read the wrong way. Whereas if you were in person, you could kind of see, you could feel the edge and you might not respond back the way you did. Or if you were wise, unless you wanted to get in a big fight, maybe not one consciously, but felt compelled to do that. Um, yeah, let me, okay, so we're at, we're at a half hour mark. I'm going to keep this below 40 minutes. That's my aim. So yeah, I remember the first time I saw internet form. So let, let me go over my internet history a little bit. If anyone's interested, if you already got something out of this video, you can just clock out now. There's something liberating about only having like 300 followers in each of my videos getting like 20 views. Cause I'm not trying to cater to anybody. I'm just like putting this out there and um, like both for myself and for you and I hope you find it useful and any feedback hit me up down below any further questions so that's interaction that I'm choosing and I will read comments and I'll like respond to the comments I mean I'm not gonna respond to like some stupid shit but um, but yeah I don't know I'm like criticizing the internet but I'm also part of the internet although I do think YouTube is more edifying and educational and has more potential than just random online discussion groups or like Facebook chats um, or, you know, TikTok because you can, you can take the time. I mean, I take the time. I listen to like two, three hour podcast about health and fitness and lots of, lots of other things. But anyways, so first time I was on the internet was I think 1994. I was 15. My parents got America online and dial up and I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Like it's a whole new world. But there was something cool about it. I remember I, w I was a big computer geek when I was a kid. I made little computer games. Um, I did programming. I, I like, you know, played a lot of games online. I would type my homework up online. I mean, not online, on the computer. There was no online for me until I was 15. And then you had to dial up. It was connected to the phone. You had to dial up. And I think you could only spend like an hour online a day. I think you had to pay by the hour. So my parents, I think I got one hour a day. And you could go in little chat rooms and everything was coming at you real time. And I remember I uploaded some of the games I made to this America Online server. And people would download them and play them. And some people even sent me money. It was like, I was like, this is so cool. Um, but that was just for a short time. Because not too long after that, I got sent to like a couple of boarding schools where I was not allowed to have my computer. And then I came back at 18. It was very dis. dis disheartening and disconcerting because I feel like I was on like a technology path and then I kind of fell off that path um like I wanted to be a computer programmer and stuff like that and then when I was 19 I took a computer programming course but it was like database programming for like adults and it was the most boring thing I ever did and I had to do like almost 400 hours of it and but my mom's like I paid for this you're finishing it and I, I literally don't remember anything I learned it was Visual basic, like database stuff. Oh, it was terrible. Um, but yeah, anyway, so so now we'll jump to uh, like 1997. I think it was 97, 98. I'd got out of boarding school. I was working a summer job. If it was summer, it must have been 98. I was working a job as a dishwasher. And I saw my brother had like left open the computer and was on this internet forum. I think it was for this game he played, Mech Warrior. It was like this like kind of robot building game. And I didn't like want to spy on what he was doing. I don't even, I don't think I read anything he wrote, but I was just looking at the forum and like, I didn't know what an online discussion forum was. And I was just like, my, my initial response was like, kind of like disgust. I was like, cause I'm like, I saw some people had like a thousand posts, 2000 posts. And I'm like, these guys are talking to each other about this game or about whatever else, like 2000, 3000 times, like. This is their life. And I was in no place to judge anyone else for not having a life. Like all my friends had gone off to college. I was like a year behind everyone. I didn't really have any friends. I was working as a dishwasher. Like I would just go to work. I would come home. I would like play on my computer all night. I was in no place to be judging anyone else. But there was just something about it that was like 
oh, like at least uh, I don't have this problem. And then fast forward, like about five years later, um, around 2002, I was, I went online, like I said earlier, to look for people to like, uh, play multiplayer with me. And then I just kind of got sucked into, um, chatting about this and that. And, and that was a different feeling. That was like an expansive feeling like, oh, wow, you can ask a question, go to sleep. And like, you know, when you wake up 50, 60 people are, you know, are talking about what you started and they're discussing with each other. It just kind of feels like, oh, I have all these friends and they're all kind of sitting on my couch and you could start a discussion and people are all chatting about it. And, you know, it's not like calling one, one guy and then you talk to him or one girl, whoever, and you have a discussion, it's like you're having, yeah, the, the forum I go to, it even kind of compares itself to like the Roman forums of back in the day where people would have these like deep philosophical discussions about what direction society should go in. But the difference is like most, most stuff people are talking about online is like either mundane details of their life, like Facebook, like this is what I ate for dinner, like, oh, I went to the beach, look at me. Or they're talking about like politics or religion or, you know, some global issue that they can control. They really don't know what's going on. Like you think you're informed because you've read a few articles, but you're not really like, I could read all day about Ukraine. I've never been to Ukraine. I've never, I, I would know more going to, going to Ukraine and traveling around Ukraine for, you know, a few weeks than I would reading about it online for, for a year because you know, it's just an intellectual abstract understanding versus like a visceral actual understanding. Just like if I could switch bodies and live, you know, a few hours in the life of someone else, I would know more about them than reading their biography, you know, for, you know, however long it would take to read a biography, eight hours. Um, yeah, so I, I got sucked into this internet forum business and I was like on it for a long time. I actually think it's worse than social media because at least on social media you're talking to people you know in real life. So you have some frame of reference, some context. Like it's kind of crazy to think you could be arguing with or feel like you're friends with someone who has like an avatar like this big and you don't know what they look like, you don't know who they are, like you don't know their sex, like they, they, they could be lying. I mean, I mean, I remember when I was on America online, this is embarrassing, but I was 15, whatever I went online and I was like flirting with people who like, I was like, I'm a 15 year old boy. Like, and the, the other person would be like, I'm a 15 year old girl. And you'd like start flirting. And like, I could have been talking to like a 50 year old man for all I know. But I mean, that's still the case. You don't know who you're talking to because people present, people per present themselves in a way that they want to be seen online, but you don't know who you're speaking to. You know, someone could say they're Russian. They could be like, you know, living in Oklahoma or vice versa. Like you don't know. Or an account could be fake. Probably 10 years from now, people will be talking to bots and think that they're real people. Um, people will probably be getting scamming, scammed by bots. I mean, people are being scammed by bots right now. Like, with the population aging and AI coming online, it's kind of scary to think of all the people who are going to be manipulated and taken advantage of. Um, yeah, I think I was I was watching some YouTube video about some like AI version of Trump that called into some radio show and they spoke to him for 17 minutes, but like supposedly it wasn't even a human, um, or it could have been someone with like voice disguising software. But yeah, I met my. Um, I met my first um, baby mama, to use the common parlance, um, this woman I dated for a long time on an internet forum. And the weird thing was I would post all the time about like, it was this like raw food forum. I was into this like raw food vegan phase for a while. And uh, yeah, she, she knew who I was because I talked all the time and I was very open, just like that's just who I am. But I didn't know who, who she was because she posted very infrequently. And then, I don't know, we ended up meeting in real life, and, and I'm not going to talk about that. But it, it's it's weird, and that can happen online, too, where one person is transparent and the other person is much more closed off. And, of course, these dynamics happen um, in real life as well. But um, anyways, I've talked for a long time. Like I said, I wanted to keep it under 40. I'm going to end up a little over 40. But 
when you when you when you take a pause from all this distraction and all this like kind of feeding yourself this media and having these like virtual fake relationships like it's difficult right because any addiction like you get into it because there's something you feel like is lacking in real life and you can in your your natural day-to-day -day life that you can get at least a facilim a a a a fax a facilimi fax facilimi i could look that up anyway you you you'd get like kind of a watered down version of it somehow um and yeah my my girl's taping up boxes in the other room cuz we're moving soon so you have to think about what like what you do want um out of life and oh yeah fuck it is so hard to focus when there's like noise going on this might be a, like an online thing too i don't know i don't know if you guys can hear this this tape Yeah, so 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 what what do I want out of life for myself, socially, emotionally, intellectually, and you, you hear this? <laughs> that, that duct tape sound drives me crazy. Um, yeah, I want to have a rich life. I want to be around people who I I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to like escape from that. I, I wouldn't want to feel like I needed more. Um, and I think, yeah, I think we all want that. I'll finish. There's this, uh, there's this comedian, uh, Patrice O'Neill. He has this, he has this thing he said that really resonated with me. It was like a, a man wants to be, a man wants to be alone, but not by himself. And, and, and this just like really hit me, you know, sometimes you, you hear something and you're like, man, I feel really understood. It's like, I like being by myself. Um, oh, oh, excuse me. I, I like, I like kind of feeling alone, like at peace with myself, but I, but I like people, I like having people around, but I don't like having to like take care of people all the time. And I think, I think we all like have that to some degree. We want to be. You just want to be able to like kind of hang out and chill and feel like you're around people who are like taking care of themselves. Not that I don't want responsibility. Like if I'm one on one with my child, I want to give to them 100. percent If I'm one on one with my my girl, I want to be able to give it to her 100. percent But like I don't know, we're social species. I feel like when I think about my ideal, I just like just kind of like sitting on the couch with your friends or sitting on the porch with people and just kind of like watching the kids play and you're just like. You're interacting, but everything is like really, really chill. Like when you're chilling, you're chilling, and when you're like on task, you're on task. Um, and I feel like the internet kind of sells you that, like, oh, you're just gonna go online and you're just gonna kind of sit back, and there's gonna be like this bizarre, not bizarre, like strange, but like, like a kind of a carnival type of atmosphere where all this cool stuff is going on, and you know, there's like jugglers and entertainers and people selling their wares and you kind of get this like open expansive community feel um that you can like choose to interact with this part of the market or this part of the market um but really it's all fake you're by yourself you're sitting alone and as soon as you close your computer or as soon as your power goes out um it's all gone and you weren't really a part of it so yeah I, I meandered a little more than I would have liked to, but I'm still glad I didn't have a script because I pretty much hit everything. Um, so if you have any thoughts, please feel free to, to share them. But remember, you don't know me. I don't know you. I'm not your friend. Who knows? Maybe I could be your friend. Maybe I could meet people via this medium. And that's what I've always hoped. And that's kind of what kept me on the hook. And I'm going to continue to do YouTube um, just almost as a video diary but also to connect with others. So, yeah, feel free to share your thoughts, but don't get sucked in too much. Make sure you close your screen, go outside, prioritize anybody in your real life over anybody online, especially 
prioritize yourself because if you don't prioritize yourself you, you're not going to have that much to give so anyway thank you very much for watching and i'll talk to you soon